Hello, this is the Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Whir 5901. With the wrist check, I'm going into the office today, so I'm wearing my Tag Heuer Aqua Racer. And Grogo is wearing my Tavis T801A. Grogo said he saw the new version of Pinocchio on Disney Plus with Tom Hanks playing Geppetto. I asked him if it was any good. He said it was so bad that it made him want to wish upon a Death Star. Here's the watch. Comes in this pretty nice case here. And also, when I ordered it, I thought it came with a gift, but it turns out it comes with a gift bag. <laughs> so if you're going to gift this to somebody, you can put it in the bag, and boy, will they think it's fancy. But here it is. This is the first war on my channel. I don't know if the double W is supposed to be pronounced as one W or if there is an implied vowel between them. War seems to focus on cheap quartz watches between $10 and $25, so this PRX homage is by far the most expensive watch at $55. I wanted to review this watch because I reviewed the much cheaper Schmee 9927 PRX homage and they and the much more expensive Pagani Design PD1753 Automatic PRX Homage and wanted to make a comparison video between the three. I chose the blue colorway since I chose blue for the other two watches and thought it would be better to keep it consistent for the comparison video. Unfortunately, their blue turns out to be purple, not blue with a purple tint, but just plain purple. There's also white, black, and black with gold indices colorway. Unless you're a fan of purple, you might want to try one of the other colors. The watch is 38.7 millimeters at the bezel, 41.2 millimeters if you measure at the case, 45.3 millimeters leg to lug, but 53.5 if you count the end links that don't articulate at all. It's only 10.3 millimeters thick and is 26 millimeters at the widest part of the bracelet since lug width does not apply and weighs 117 grams on the supplied bracelet with two links removed. The bezel is a smooth polished stainless steel and then the dial has a pretty good sunburst effect there. We got the word name and logo up top and that's all the writing on the watch. No mention of water resistance. You get 50. Then the indices are not loomed and then you have the minute markers between the indices and then we have a date at the three with no cyclops. But the hands are loon, but the second hand is not. Then the crown is a push-pull. You don't get a screw down for only 50 meters usually. And the crown action though is good. This is a Japanese movement, so it's not all loosey-goosey. And when you go to set it, you don't get a minute hand jump. And it looks like the second hand is barely missing the markers. Not enough for it to be cons a consideration. Then the crystal is just a dome mineral glass. And then the case is solid stainless steel. It's really thin. It's a nice case. I really like the case. It's one of the highlights of the watch. Then if you look at the case back, we got a coin edge screw down. I'm kind of bummed because I, I finally ordered some uh, coin edge screw down tools. And uh, I don't have one big enough to fit this one. So I had to order another one. So I will not be taking this case back off to show you the movement. The movement is Japanese. That's all it says. So I don't know what kind it is. The bracelet, it seems to be a pretty good bracelet. And we got, uh, but the end links here, they're kind of like the Pagani design. They don't really articulate. They do a little bit, but they're mostly fixed. So you don't really get any articulation until the next link. And then we have push pin adjusters, not screw pin. I'm perfectly fine with that. And then we have a sign butterfly clasp. And it's got the Wur name and logo there. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It wears nice, nice and thin, flat on the wrist. And uh, yeah, there's no uh, micro adjust since it's a butterfly class, but the links are fairly short, so you should still be able to get a decent fit. But yeah, it looks nice. Here we are in the loom room. Just wearing the watch, I knew the loom was practically non-existent, but here we go.
As I speed up the time, it is already gone. About as bad as that Fangeen. I reviewed, but still better than the George. What do I like about this watch? Well, I really like the case. Solid stainless steel, nice and thin. And the bracelet's nice. And I like the fact that the watch wears nice. It's not too heavy, and it fits nice and flat on the wrist. What are my gripes and groans? Purple dial when I ordered a blue dial. And the loom is just awful. Just really horrible loom. Do I recommend this watch? Well, how important is blue to you? If blue is very important to you, then do not get this watch because you're going to get purple. But if blue is not important to you and you like purple, then go ahead and get it. Also, if you don't like purple or blue, then get a, get one of the other colorways. They seem pretty nice. Basically, I paid 55 for this, which is a tough recommend. However, I noticed they lowered the price to 40 on AliExpress. So if you can get it for 40 then yes, I would recommend it for 40 Well, thank you for watching my review of the WUR 5901, and I will be back with another review. And then I will eventually be back with a comparison video between the three PRX homages I recently reviewed. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.